If you were to fly around the world following the path of the equator, and if you could look out across the tropical zone on either side of your plane, you would behold the 50 or more countries, some of them large, some of them but tiny islands, in which coffee today grows. Here on the colorful land of rumba and romance, the coffee that is to become a part of the matchless Chasen Sanborn blend is cultivated. Alternately sopping up tropical sunshine and rain, the coffee berries flourish in solitary splendor until the picking season arrives, and the natives move in en masse to start the coffee on its way to the markets of the world. teams and mule back, the coffee starts the journey that will carry it thousands of miles by ships to any of the ten Chase and Sanborn roasting plants located throughout this country. At last, the coffee reaches its destination, the Chase and Sanborn roasting plant ready to join its brother coffees of selected and distinctive quality from all over the world in the blend that is truly friendship in a cup. Though the characteristics of coffee grown in each locality are carefully chosen, still every batch is sampled. For a fine blend is a delicate balance of many different qualities. And therefore, it's vitally important that each individual coffee be up to standard. After the samples have been checked for color, appearance, and quality, they are roasted in miniature ovens that accurately reproduce the conditions of the factory roasting process. These laboratory ovens, together with other delicate instruments, are the coffee technician's slide rule or test tube for maintaining standards of operation on a larger scale. appearance of the coffee beans are of course important, but the final test is naturally the preparation of the samples and the tasting of each one of them by a skilled laboratory technician. First of all, the samples are carefully ground and the amount of coffee to be used in each cup is accurately weighed. Strict laboratory procedure is observed here to see that each of the samples receives identical treatment. After the proper amount of boiling water is added to each of the cups, the samples are now ready for the ultimate test. Just one more check before the taste test. Our expert places his talented nose before each cup and draws in a man-sized whiff of coffee aroma. If the sample has that full-bodied tang that he's accustomed to, it is ready for tasting. When you drink a cup of coffee in a restaurant, you may not know where it came from or how it was processed, but you most certainly do know whether or not it tastes good. And therefore, our final test of the Chase and Sanborn coffee is simply to taste it. These men with years of experience behind them have such an acutely developed sense of taste that they are able to detect the very slightest deviation from the highest standards which have been set. 
Finally satisfied that everything is as it should be, we must now proceed to duplicate the flavor in a laboratory cup on a national basis. To translate a few spoons full of perfectly blended coffee into millions of pounds. This warehouse where the Chase and Sanborn blend first takes shape is sort of a league of coffee nations since it represents the product of countries all over the world. The blender is as careful in selecting the proper number of bags of each coffee as a pharmacist would be in compounding a prescription. At the mixer, the coffee is handled on a batch basis so that a more rigorous control can be kept over the blend. Here, the tropical treasure houses of the world join together in a blend that fully captures the individuality of each type of coffee. Even though every bag has been tested by the laboratory, the blender takes a lot of pride in his work, and therefore cannot resist testing each bag for himself. Before going into the mixing drum, the coffee beans are cleaned by a winnowing process in a delicately set air cleaning machine. They are then carried past a powerful electromagnet, which removes any pieces of iron or steel which may have accidentally become mixed with the green coffee in the country of origin. This machine, which looks like an elongated concrete mixer, thoroughly mixes the beans by revolving them for a predetermined period. During the mixing process, all the light dust and chaff is removed by a suction fan. And now we come to the heart of the process, the roaster room. The coffee flows into each oven in 500 pound batches. These ovens are so constructed that the coffee is revolved in a drum during the entire roasting period while the heat in the form of hot air is fed into the oven from the rear. Thus, the coffee itself never comes in contact with the flame. And since it is constantly in motion within the oven, each bean is roasted uniformly. Only experienced men operate a roasting oven, for in order to bring out all the delicate flavor, the process must not be too fast nor too slow. The man operating the oven must have a good eye for matching color, because only when the proper shade of brown is reached does he know that the roast is completed? Each roast is carefully compared with a standard sample. And thus, the roaster man is able to catch that fleeting moment when the coffee is at its peak of perfection. At this moment, he turns off the heat and applies a very fine spray of water to arrest the roasting process. It is necessary to cool the coffee as soon as it comes from the oven, for a large mass of hot coffee holds so much heat that it would continue roasting until too dark if it were not stirred and cooled immediately. We've seen how all foreign material lighter than the coffee bean is removed before processing. Now in the ingenious stoning process, the reverse is true. Any and all particles heavier than a coffee bean are removed. The stream of air in this chute is carefully adjusted to lift the coffee beans, but will not lift anything heavier. In this way, small stones and other remaining impurities are completely eliminated. Before reaching the grinding mill itself, the coffee must pass over another powerful electromagnet, which checks up on the previous processes and guarantees that no metal bits remain. The coffee feeds continuously into these high-speed mills which produce what is known as steel-cut or granulized coffee. A series of micromatically machined finishing rollers produce the special grinds which have been found from experience to be best suited to the trade.
At the bottom of the grinder, the ground coffee passes through a vibrating screen known as a scalper sieve, which removes large pieces of chaff and other fragments. Samples of the grind are taken by the laboratory to make sure that the coffee is being cut to the proper size. The sample is placed in the top sieve of a series of five sieves, each of which has holes a trifle smaller than the one above. The sieves are then placed in a machine known as a Rotap shaker, which shakes them for about one minute, thus separating the different size granules. By weighing and accurately checking the percentage of coffee remaining on each sieve against a standard, the technician is able to determine whether or not the grind is absolutely perfect. Incidentally, this is the only accurate test which can be made on ground coffee to determine and maintain the established standards. Back in the plant, ground coffee from the high-speed granulator flows into a special bin which feeds the filling machines. This true flow hopper keeps the coffee flowing in a steady stream without disturbing the finished composition of the grind. And now the home stretch. The packing department where the famous Chase and Sanborn blend is packed into a variety of containers all familiar to the millions who use and enjoy good coffee. First, Chase and Sanborn bags, moving along a conveyor to the filling machine like a parade of paper soldiers. Chase and Sanborn coffee and vacuum packed jars flow through this labeling machine in a seemingly unending stream. But the Chase and Sanborn container most familiar to the thousands of hotel and restaurant operators who believe that the public deserves the best is undoubtedly the Chase and Sanborn fancy mark. The moisture-proof glassine-lined bags are individually placed under the spout of automatic weighing machines which guarantee that each bag will contain a full pound. The conveyor belt carries the filled bags to the operators who fold the tops and seal them with gum tape. Then at the end of the line, they are packed into strong double container bags holding 12 one pound packages. Fancy Mark, the Chase and Sanborn hotel and restaurant blend, receives special handling all the way from the time the green coffee enters the plant until the finished roast is packed and distributed. At regular intervals, the laboratory takes several one-pound bags from the production line and submits them to the most important test of all, the taste test. Their job has two purposes. First of all, to guarantee that the coffee represents the utmost in rich, flavorful taste. And secondly, to assure the uniformity of each day's output of the roasting ovens, so that the people who recognize and enjoy the distinctive Chase and Sanborn flavor can count upon a continuing supply of coffee that never varies from the high established standard. And now the coffee is on its way. The famed Chase and Sanborn delivery system is the final step in assuring that the coffee that has been grown right, blended right, and roasted right will be delivered to the consumer in the peak of condition, fresh from the roaster. And that's important. For coffee, the most popular beverage in our land, is one of those important trifles that mean so much to the hotel and restaurant business. The appreciation of a good cup of coffee is universal, and everyone, whether he be gourmet or just plain hungry, demands the same unvarying excellence in his coffee when he dines out. All 
all the rich aroma and flavorful tang of this tropical treasure are yours for the drinking in every cup of Chase and Sanborn Fancy Mark coffee.